So, everybody would have heard by now the saddening news yesterday that uh, one of the greatest talents, actors and comedians of all time passed away. And seemingly so, he passed away at his own volition, by his own will, his own choice, in an act of suicide. And I just wanted to share my feelings that, you know, I love Robin Williams as much as the next person. It's hard to hate a guy that's brought so much laughter into your lounge rooms for so many years in so many films for children and for adults. You know, from Fern Gully and Aladdin through to Mrs. Doubtfire and The Jungle Book. Oh, not The Jungle Book, sorry. Jumanji. That was an awesome film. Loved it as a kid, you know. And then other films which challenged you and made you think more, like Bicentennial Man and One Hour Photo and Goodwill Hunting and everything, everything the man had done. He had such a diverse, uh, you know, palette of colors in terms of what he could express and the kind of characters and roles he could adapt and play. guy has a small penis obviously he was well known for like being able to improvise on the spot and really really fast pace mentally and overall you know he started off as an actor and then he worked towards doing stand-up comedy not the other way around from the very offset he was up there and giving it his best and fully committed and he was a passionate and well abled actor and to me, the saddest thing about it, besides the fact that we've lost one of the greatest, and I know it's been said time and time since, but we have lost one of the greatest actors and, and comedians, and just characters of this generation. You know, there won't be any more movies now with Robin Williams in it, and that's, it's kind of sad. You know? And it's not just that that saddens me, that we won't, that we won't see him anymore. But it was sad about it is that, you know, when you looked him in, in the eye in any role he was playing or when he was talking for real and in interviews or when he was on stage, he always had this sparkle, this certain twinkle in his eye. And you can sense there a child still very much alive. And I think this is what allowed him to be so engaged and, and to improvise and adapt so passionately to new roles and character because I think he found the ability, like some people can, to just exist in that space of, you know, freedom, so to speak, and without the constraints of, you know, of what other people experience in terms of ego and being overly concerned with, you know, what others are thinking and all these kinds of limitations. I think he was able to dig really deep into himself, to go beyond things which he feared, and stare all the, the aspects of him be, his being in the eye, and that allowed him a deeper, a, a more, a greater amount of resources to work with, and, uh, and, and enabled him to, to pour out his soul, so to speak, um, with a lot more color and a lot more depth, a lot more richness. And that's the saddest thing, that somebody that you sense this child existing in, someone with such an open mind. And, you know, sure it's known that he dabbled with drugs and alcohol and that he was depressed for so long. And that's the sad thing, that someone that had that twinkle and that smile and made us just so happy, you know, in so many ways, time and time again was ended up being so sad, so low. Well, maybe he wasn't even sad, maybe he was numb, who knows? But he ended up getting to a point where going on was either pointless or unbearable. Pointless or unbearable. And that's the sad thing, you know? And of all the people to go, I mean, a lot of people perish, celebrities perish over time. Generally, I'm like, well, that's a shame, you know? But this, just like Heath Ledger passing on, this is one of the few times where I'm actually 
quite upset about it and it's actually, you know, affecting me a lot more than the, the typical Joe blogs that happens to pass away, happens to be a celebrity, so more people just happen to give a shit. I think this guy actually deserves people giving a shit because he was a good guy. Did a lot of good things. And now he's not here anymore. And it's sad that he saw that that was the best choice to, to take, to opt out of the game. You know, he was he was married with his wife what, only for three years. I think it was his third wife. Has two children, two kids. And despite that, despite the family, everything he'd done and achieved, who he was, even for someone like that, it wasn't enough. And the pain or the pointlessness was too much. And that's what makes you think about, you know, what it takes to make one happy or what it takes to make one fulfilled or sense purpose in life. And it also makes you think that, you know, there, there are people that come into our lives and they make us smile and laugh and they inspire us and they do great things. And a lot of the time, I think we can just easily get into the habit of making assumptions that these people are fine, that these people have got their shit sorted. I mean, they're always smiling, you know, they always seem to be happy, seem to be in control of their schemes and they make us happy. But I think quite often when, when we see people with that twinkle in their eye and the big smiles making us laugh, that actually the opposite is true. And I think that those that have experienced a lot of pain and had a lot of darkness pervade their life and dark times that they've experienced, I think they're able to dig deeper. I think they're able to better empathize with others who are also in pain and dark times and able to better draw from their own resources, from their own empathy with greater conviction and with greater, you know, with greater need in terms of, you know, providing a smile and providing a laugh to the people who need it. You know, life's a painful joke, laughter is the cure. And so you'll find among the most hilarious of comedians, usually have the most tragic circumstances in their lives. Very sad stories to tell indeed. And, and it makes sense. You know, those that don't feel as much pain and live lives relatively simply, don't really so much appreciate the pain of others, they don't have that same kind of empathy, so maybe they don't have, feel the same need to make others smile, make others laugh. So I think it's definitely a contrast thing, a yin-yang thing, that the more you feel pain, that the more you appreciate joy and pleasure, and the more that you can actually care about other people and dig deeper into yourself to give more, just to give more of whatever they need. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. It was a great guy, funny guy, very sad. He will be missed, always be loved, um, and looked up to by all those that are human enough with all their frailty and all their burdens and all their obstacles. They're gifted enough to, whilst they're alive, make us all smile and enjoy the ride.